You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. This is the Brock and Dolby Podcast. Welcome to Thursday. My name is Brock. I'm Dolby. Uh, so my sister, uh, I think it was at Christmas time, she got both my parents for Christmas, like one of those 23 Me things. Oh, the like... Uh, it's kind of like or... Ancestry.com. Yeah, yeah, find out where, where you came from. And I think you take like a hair sample or something, mm. whatever, and it's supposed to come. And so... <laughs> it's the only time you're allowed to spit in a tube and send it in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Some people pay for that on the internet, actually. Uh, for my mom, it was pretty standard. I I mean, yeah. we're Métis, so a huge part of it was being sure. indigenous. Uh, a lot of it being French, of course, with the Métis in there. Mm-hmm. A little bit of British and Irish, some Spanish in there. But my dad's, I found absolutely freaking hilarious. Really? My dad's from Newfoundland, for yeah. anyone that doesn't know. Here, look at this photo. All right. Tell everyone what it says for my dad's 23 and Me. Uh, so it's 99.8% European, Northwestern European <laughs> British and Irish, zero point two percent unassigned. What does unassigned mean? He's ninety nine percent British and Irish, which is like the whitest thing you can be. Super white, and that's just Newfoundland to a T, right there. Like oh, my dad's sure. gene pool, yeah, has not gone anywhere, and it made me and my sister laugh so hard. That she's like, "Why did I spend all this money to find out that dad is just?" Pure Irish. Just as white as the driven snow. 99.8%, dude. Because that's the fun in these, is finding out. It was a waste of money for my dad, dude. You've got like a little sliver of this in your heritage. Your family roots yeah. extend one branch into this part of the world. You're like, wow, that's really cool. And for him, it's like, nah, you've been here. Your family been here. Everybody been here. Well, the best part is, is like growing up, my dad, we were always like, oh, like, because my mom's got like such a rich, like, back. Background a and tapestry. Stuff. And we're like, what's yours? And he's like, I don't know. I think we're Irish. <laughs> and that's pretty much it, dude. Dude like, nailed it. Yeah, yeah. He knows where he's from. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my dad always had a theory that when you go, like, if I ever went to Newfoundland and I was single, he said, if you ever pick up a girl, you need to get two piece ID and a blood test. For sure. There's probably a good chance that's true based on this 23 and me, man. I would say a 99.8% chance. <laughs> <Holy shit. laughs> The Brock and Dolby Brock and Dolby Podcast. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Yeah, boy! <laughs> it's been so long since we heard about Flava Flav doing honestly a whole lot of anything these days. But the man has stepped up to help out the economy in these times of need. Are you talking about the Red Lobster thing? I was just going to say, did you see Flava Flav at Red Lobster? Yeah, what was it? He posted on Twitter that he ordered everything at Red Lobster. Because if you don't know, Red Lobster filed for bankruptcy like a month back or something like that, right? Right, so he tweeted this very impressive spread pic of him in front of a table with everything from Red Lobster saying, your boy meant it when I said I was going to do anything and everything to help at Red Red Lobster and save the Cheddar Bay Biscuits. This is a lot of food, man. I don't know if it's true or not, but after I saw that post, I saw another thing that mm. allegedly Flava Flav has also been having meetings with Red Lobster now. Really? So I don't know if he's in talk to like buy in or help <laughs> out or maybe they're doing like a collab or something. Like, I mean, the biscuits at Red Lobster are good, mm. but are they give up your own fortune to keep the restaurant alive good? I mean, the thing that killed Red Lobster was the endless shrimp made Maybe if they put a time on it and they could make it like a Flava Flav clock that's in the building. (laughs) You know what? That would actually be a sick dining experience where you come in, you pay your bill or whatever, and then you have one hour of endless shrimp, endless lobs or whatever it is. But they literally put a clock necklace, Flav style, around your neck. That'd be sick. And the bells just start going when you... (laughs) When you hit the time limit, it would be a spectacle for the whole restaurant. As soon as you finish. Yeah, boy. (laughs) And the waiter comes over and takes all your shrimp away. Yeah. In (laughs) retrospect, though, ordering an entire menu is such a dick move at a restaurant. You got to imagine the people in the kitchen were like, seriously? Right. Yeah. Like, I assume this is like a photo op. Like, they probably had it planned. But if a normal person, me or you, goes in and is like, I'll take one of everything. The guys in the back are like, no. Yeah. Why? Also, I mean, like, that's like, that's a big hammer swinging kind of move. Oh, 100%. Because there's no way. You look, and I mean, I've seen, like, reality TV shows that Flav's on. That man can eat. 
This is too much food for any one person. Yeah. So you're literally just flopping your wallet out on the table to show how big it is. Yeah. And then all of this food is going to waste. If uh, <laughs> if you could order the entire menu from one restaurant, oh. what would you go with? Oh. I mean, like, right off the bat, my head goes to fast food because I guess maybe that's kind of like where I live. Hammered drunk in the drive thru in yeah. the taxi cab. One of everything. Yeah. I'll take all the McNuggets, give me a Big Mac, put a filet of fish in there somewhere. Yeah. I'm going to need a McFlurry at that's, the end of it. That's the dream, honestly, coming home <laughs> drunk from the bar, dude. Yeah. But at the same time, like, maybe fast food's not the right move because it's all burgers. To counterpart that, being drunk in the drive thru, hung over the next morning, if you could go to like a Denny's or something. Dude, give me everything. Give me one of everything on the breakfast menu. Right. I want one fried egg, one poached egg. Give me the sausage and the ham and the bacon, toast, pancakes, French toast. Mm -hmm. Give me some crepes. What do you got for hash browns? Bring them all to the table. Bunch of milkshakes. (laughs) Now, with the hangover, I think that's where you've crossed the line. What? Uh, Hangover milkshake? Hangover milkshake is the cure. My grandpa taught me that. Damn. I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I never tried it. To me, Dairy feels like the enemy. Hangover milkshake, dude? <laughs> It'll change your life, man. You eat a greasy burger and have a mil- milkshake, phew, you feel like a new man. Dude, how fast could you drain a bank account being like, I'll take one of everything at a restaurant like The Keg? <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford to do that. Dude, the idea of doing that just makes me all oh, feel so broke right now. There's so many things and every one of them costs so much money, but I bet you... If you could have one bite of everything, it would be delicious. That's a dine and dash thing for sure. You gotta run. You yeah. gotta run if you order. You are the anti flavor flav. I am trying to bankrupt this restaurant. Yeah, yeah. They charge extra for the double baked potato, dude. I can't afford that. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Someone had a good idea on the text line at seven six two triple five. Said, uh, "What if Red Lobster to make all their money back just mm. comes up with something called the Flava Flav Challenge? Okay, where you have to order the entire menu. Oh, do what we said with the clock thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah." And then if you eat it all, then it's free. Right. If you don't, then you got to pay for it all. It would almost certainly be impossible. I mean, looking at the spread in this tweet, and if you haven't seen the tweet, text FLAV to 762 We'll send you the link. You can check the show links on the podcast. But, like, it's so much food, you would almost certainly end up paying for it. Well, I feel like 90% of the time, whenever a restaurant has a food challenge, it's set up for you to fail. 100%. But that's part of the fun, right? It's like, A, the restaurant makes a bunch of money, they get the notoriety. And also, if everyone can do the challenge, then it's not really that cool to be part of that group. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're one of like a dozen people that took down the, the eat the whole menu challenge... Then you feel like you accomplished something. I did a burger challenge at a place in BC one time, and I like it's one of those things when you go into it, you're like, oh, this is easy. Then yeah. you get halfway through, and you're like, what am I doing with my life? The thing with most eating challenges is is they move stuff in as like sides that you don't really think of. Like I remember there was a franchise of uh, bars out west called the Canadian Brew House, and they had a six patty burger they called the Rita. Mm. And if you could eat the Rita in, I think it was like an hour, it was free. Otherwise, it was like 40 bucks. But what they don't really spotlight is it also came with a large poutine that you had to eat. Yeah. And it was like you'd watch people crush the burger and then they get to the poutine and be like, oh, no, I'm, I will pay. Well, I you got to be smart when you're doing those challenges. You can't have beer. You can't have pop. You got to just be straight water kind of yeah. thing. You know? And even then, you got to be sporadic about it. Mm-hmm. I love the idea of an eating challenge. I love the idea of just sacrificing the rest of your evening because yeah. you can't follow it up with anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, and even the, like, the Flavor Flav thing, it, like, that's basically just going to a buffet, bro. Like, <laughs> that you know? is true. Yeah. It's an eating challenge if you're at a sit-down restaurant. It's just a Tuesday if you're at the buffet. It's funny, like if you put a time restraint on it, it becomes an eating challenge. If you don't, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> That's all it is, dude. Like, I feel like every time I go to the Mandarin, my whole challenge is like, how many plates am I going to get in? I got to get in at least five. You Brother, know? Like, I went to the Mandarin yesterday with the kids because I didn't feel like cooking in this weather. I went two plates and one dessert, and I won't lie, when I got back to the car, I was like, I didn't do it right. Two plates? That's disappointing, dude. I'm, That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to lie. I get mad if people come with me to a yeah. buffet and they don't pig out. Like... I don't mean to call them out, but we've got these friends, Nick and Matrina. Last mm. year, they went out to the Mandarin with us, and they showed up, and me and Courtney are just shoveling our faces. You're going. They had one plate each, and I was just like, you shouldn't have came. 
Don't come. <laughs> don't come to the buffet if you're going to have one plate. A, it's a waste of money. And B, I don't want to sit across from you. Well, because then you feel bad, right? You feel like the gross one. Well, I already I already know I'm being gross. Right. Don't make me realize it. I don't need the evidence sitting across from me when you finish your one plate and dab your face with the napkin. I need to look across at you and see you undo your belt buckle and be yeah. like, you're my kind of guy. We're like, going to war together right now. I need to know seriously. that you're in the trenches with me. Yeah. You can't leave me behind. Mm-hmm. That's like, <laughs> that's like, you know, finishing a hockey game and seeing one guy without a sweaty head and you're like you didn't put in any work today what are you even doing here yeah, yeah, you yeah. should have stayed home today. why are you half-assing why'd you even come dude like <laughs> then he takes out a case of beer in the locker room and you're like oh no you're good never mind never if mind. another couple ever invites you to go to a buffet they're not inviting you to go to dinner they're inviting you to go to war <laughs> the brock and dolby podcast i propose a road trip uh, oh. coming up in early july uh or late june the world's largest bouncy castle is coming to Ontario. You have piqued my interest. At the end of June, it's going to be in Hamilton, which I'm always a little bit eh, on going to Hamilton. Yeah, we'll go to Ottawa. <laughs> it's going to be in Ottawa. <laughs> Let's go to Ottawa. It's the <laughs> second week of July. And it ties into something we've talked about on the show recently, the idea of having kids and no kids sections, because the world's largest bouncy castle has adult only days. Dude, damn, I'm just looking at this link you sent me. Yes. This looks insane, dude. It's huge. If you want to see it, uh, text bouncy to 762 we will send you the link. If you're listening in the podcast, it'll be in the show links. So they're actually going to have adults only nights for this place? Adults only nights where it will be no kids allowed, only grown-ups. I have not yet on That's the website so sick. found anything if there will be drinks or not, but I do oh, ask... Oh, that makes it deadlier. Yeah. I do not ask this question. Do you imagine that people are going to get hurt as adults on this thing more than during the kid time? Oh, my God. So many people are going to blow out their backs on this thing, man. That's what I was thinking. Like, I'm watching this. I'm looking at this website yesterday, and I'm freaking out. I'm thinking, like, oh, my God, I have to tell Brock. Me and Brock and Courtney have got to go to Ottawa. We have to go and check this thing out. But then I'm thinking the last time I took my kids to a trampoline park and I hurt my... Remember when I hurt my lower yeah, back? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, how many times do you even play with your kids and you're like, you bend over and you're like, ah! Right. Ah. Like, what they need for something like this is like, it's cool that they have this set up. It looks amazing. It's awesome that they have adult only so you can just have fun as a grown-up. But what they need is for like half hour before it opens is just to have like a guided stretching thing out front. I was even going to say like they should have like a, a big first aid tent for sure. Yes. Maybe a chiropractor tent as well, a massage <laughs> booth on top of that. Oh, yeah. dude, if you are a registered massage therapist, you can make so much money. Even if you don't affiliate yourself with the event, Yeah, just bring your table and park right outside the fence, like outside the grounds, and just charge people like 10 bucks, 20 bucks for a quick massage. Yeah, yeah. You would make a killing from every grown-up who looks like me heading back to their car going, ow, ow. Ow. <laughs> I love this idea of an adult bouncy castle. I mean, like, how come, like, the older we get for our birthdays, it's like, oh, let's just go out for drinks and dinner. Right. I want to have, like, an actual adult birthday party yeah. where you show up. I've got the bouncy castle and stuff. Like, we've got uh, we've got a ball pit or something going, Yo, man. a grown-up ball pit would be sick. That'd be nuts, dude. You could hide, like, drinks in there or something, like little mini bottles. Oh, yeah. give you a reason to go down under the mm-hmm. ball. Yeah, 100%. Also, Giant-sized grown-up slip and slide, depending on what time of year your birthday is at. That'd be nice. That would be awesome. Jump out of the ball pit with your newly found mini bottle of booze and go slide down the slip and slide. Dude, even just adult pin the tail on the donkey, Mm. take a shot, spin around three times and try and find it. (laughs) That'd be amazing, dude. Except instead of like a paper uh, tail and like a paper target, Mm. it's a tattoo gun and your buddy. (laughs) (laughs) And you get loop bags on the way out, but your loop bag is just like a bottle of water, a bottle of Gatorade and some Advil. That's the best loop bag. Bag of all time for a grown-up birthday party. A McDonald's gift card for the way home. Oh. Yes. Dude, I just figured it out. End of September, I'm doing all of this. Make adult <laughs> birthday parties great again, all right? This, this is the Brock and Delby Podcast. Have you seen that uh, story about that, like, Amazon tribe out in Brazil? 
Oh, is that the one that got Starlink Internet? Yeah, so this Amazon <laughs> tribe that's very remote, uh, they just got Elon Musk Starlink, and they're actually pretty cheesed at Elon right now. Yeah. Because apparently, as soon as they got Internet... Everyone in their tribe has basically been hooked on porn and social media <laughs> since they got it. Yeah, it's like a divide between the people who are like, no, we have work to do. We, we have to get things done to survive. And then there's other people like, yeah, 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 hang on, I'm watching something. Yeah, the elders seem pretty choked about it. Uh, they're saying it's ruining, A, the dynamic in the village, and B, the youth are just simply getting lazier, and then C, none of their tasks are yeah. getting done that they do on a regular basis. <laughs> Relatable. And you know what's funny with like all the different cultures and people we have in this world? The one thing we all have in common, everybody watches smut. <laughs> That's just it, man. And it's crazy because it's like they have one computer in this village, from what I can tell, that is accessible to the entire village. And they're still just dialing up the porn. Dude, that browser history has to be crazy, dude. Especially if it's one computer. Yeah. Do you think you're clearing it before the next guy? Or I have to assume at some point you're just like, he's coming in to watch the same thing. Yeah. I don't even think you closed the tab. At yeah. this point. Do they have, like, is it like a closed off? I have so many questions, honestly, especially because of, like, that's what they're doing with Th- it. Like, that's just it. What's the protocol? Mm-hmm. Like, is there just a sock on the door at all times? Are they all just watching it like a bunch of kids, like, finding, like, their dad's VHS? Like, Dude, the way you see, like, highlight clips from the hometown uh, bars when the team wins, like, the big game <laughs> and everyone's <laughs> jumping up and down and cheering. Is that what they're doing with the smut? I honestly, <laughs> even just like what are the trending categories out there because you know when you go on you know the websites it'll be like this is what's trending in canada like yeah they're like big stepmom like kind of people like, <laughs> they're what's... creating their own pop culture out there right now yeah. they're determining what the hot trends are going to be it's it's honestly not a surprise that Someone got internet for the first time, and and this is what they did. I mean, like I said, this is literally the entire planet is doing the exact same thing. It's the reason our phones are as big as they are right now. Oh, exactly. I think the real question is, which one of these tribe members is going to be the first one to open an OnlyFans? Mm. (laughs) Damn, dude. (laughs) Right? Yeah. And and people would check it out. If you found out. I feel like I would have to check it out, yeah. This remote... Amazonian village got internet for the first time, and now one of them is uploading anything. Doesn't even have to be smut. Is uploading anything to OnlyFans? Yeah. Like, well, I want to see it. I want to see I, it. I want to know what they're doing. Dude, I'd pay nine ninety nine a month for that. <laughs> At least for one month. <laughs> Do you remember the first time that uh, you saw like dirty stuff? Oh yeah, my folks had a like old family friend that needed a place to stay for a bit. Yeah, so he was staying in our spare room back in the territories for like a good month or something like that. He left some behind. I, I it wasn't even that he left some behind. I was walking down the hall one day and one of his magazines was out like out. Yeah, and I was like, ooh, <laughs> like squirreled in and grabbed it and ran off. I feel like that's what it was for most of us. Like my uncle used to just have a stack of hustlers and playboys <laughs> in his bathroom in the basement. And I remember being like 11 years old all of a sudden like realizing what it was and yeah. was like, oh! Right, yeah. The one light shines down on it. The angel choir kicks off yeah. and you're just like, I must see more. I took one of those hustlers. I like shoved it down my pants. So that no one would see it? Dude, I sat through like a family dinner. No. The car ride back home and everything. And then like went upstairs into my closet and I was like, my precious. (laughs) (laughs) It's a crazy moment the first time. That you see some like porno, you know? Well, it's just, yeah, it's like it, once you hit that certain age, no matter who you are, something kind of clicks, something mm-hmm. kicks off, and then you get that first bit of stimuli, and you're just like, this is going to determine who I am as a person. I feel like if kids find a magazine now, it's almost like finding your dad's vinyl or something. You're, you're like, it's almost more of a like, wow, I can't believe this still exists. Yeah. You see kids around the Hustler magazine poking at it like, uh, was the Ben Stiller Zoolander with the, the files are in the computer. Yeah, like, They yeah. don't know what to do with it. Well, and it's a big deal when you're younger too and you find it for the first time versus, I mean, kids now, it's just like one click away, right? Like you had to like, no, we were talking about knowing a guy who knows a guy the right. other day. It's like you had to know someone who had the hookup kind right. of. Like there's a good chance that... 
for my son when he gets old enough, the first time he's going to see those sorts of uh, images or videos, it's just going to be on like a incognito mode browser. Yeah, someone yeah. at school told him what to Google. Yeah, it wasn't like a secretive. I mean, it's still a secretive thing, I guess. But well, yeah, don't use dad's computer for that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Seven, six, two, triple five. I'm curious. When was the first time that you actually saw some smut? <laughs> I don't really want like the full details yeah. on everything that went down, but when was the first time you saw it? Was it yours? Did you go to a sleepover? Did a buddy show you? Like... We're more interested in the scenario than the outcome, if you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, kids today will never know what it's like to have one magazine shared between four friends. That's right. <laughs> I need to borrow it for the weekend. Kids today will never know why the pages are stuck together. The Brock and Dobby Podcast. We've got friend of the show Bobby on the phone. Uh, when was the first time you seen some smut, dude? Fox Magazine. Found it in the garage. Shoved it down my pants. I was laughing when you said that. <laughs> and I was only like... 20 feet from the house, I shoved it down my pants to get it into the house. I ended up getting a big rash on my stomach from whatever chemicals or rat was on the magazine in a box. So is that your old man's magazine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I can't enough about me. Hold on. The guy that I work with, he went home and Googled bestiality on his dad's girlfriend's computer because they were talking about it at school. Oh, my God. Oh, oh no. Yeah. And his dad and his girlfriend, like, caught him because... Remember, it was like, enter your credit card now, or we're going to tell everybody what you're looking at. That, like, damn mm. way back when, and it, yeah. like, froze the computer and wrecked your computer. <sighs> Dude, I, I've i never even thought about how terrifying it is to be a kid right now. Yeah. I mean, if you don't know about clearing the search history or even the like the <laughs> auto like finish on Google, auto like, complete, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go to your go to your person, your significant other's computer, and just type P into the browser and see what the first thing that pops up is. <laughs> Although I never thought about typing B and see what the first thing that pops up is. Oh yeah, man, he was choked. He was like, his dad's like, "What the hell, man?" <laughs> So, Dolby, <laughs> as a parent, yeah. will you ever look at your kid's browser history? <sighs> I mean, like, I want to say I'm the cool dad and keep, but yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, probably. Like, if nothing else, so, I don't even know that I would be like, oh, I would need to know if he's looking up smut or whatever, but just like, you need to know what they're looking you up. You want to keep tabs, I guess. Right? Yeah. So, I guess the thing is, is do you say something? Because I've always thought that's interesting. Like, if you caught your kid with, yeah. like, a skin flick or a skin magazine or whatever, to go in and be like, rabble, 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 right. right? Depending on your views and stuff. But would you, would you bring it up, or is that something you just keep down inside and, like, never mention? I think it would depend, and this is, this is maybe funny to say, it would depend on the state of the device that he was using. Like, that's the thing, right? My kids both got tablets that are connected to the internet with browsers. Uh -huh. If the time comes, they're going to be able to look stuff like that up. Oh, yeah. If they've got a bunch of, like, viruses and stuff like that, I think the only way I have that conversation is if, A, they're looking up something that is beyond inappropriate, uh -huh. or B, if I have to have the talk about, like, quit clicking the pop-up ads. <laughs> I can't keep sending this thing in to get it fixed. Yeah, yeah. I can't keep can't keep flashing the hard drive. That's a more awkward conversation for, I think, a parent and a child than the whole birds and the bees in general. Well, that's just it, right? Because the birds and the bees is like you try and tackle it from like a scientific method or whatever. And it's like you are talking about a natural progression of our species. Yeah. It's much more difficult to be like... Can you knock it off with the stepbrother stuff? Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> someone just said, imagine being the hotel uh, clerk when someone checks out after renting a movie. Oh, God. The That's got to be just as awkward because it's like they see everything that you've done. So they're like, oh, I, I hope you enjoyed that, uh, that great movie last night. I would say that it's actually probably more awkward because most people, when confronted with that sort of thing, mm. will their first instinct is to try and deny it. Yeah. So you get the bill for the hotel room, it's got these extra charges on it, and you're confronted with like your own morality. You're like, yeah. I didn't I didn't do and now you have to have an argument with a stranger 
who clearly watched pornography like eight hours ago. Sure. <laughs> Just so you can get the money they owe you. It's kind of like when you go to the bank and they can see how broke you are. You know what I mean? They're like, you ate Arby's five times this week? Yeah, like, you're asking for a loan and they're looking at your recent purchases and you're just like, that wasn't me, I swear to God. <laughs> Seeing people's bank accounts would be really weird. I mean, it would either make you feel like really good about yourself yeah. or really bad about yourself at the same time. I think like, it depends on, yeah, the relation of the person to you and it, like whose bank account it is and how much of it ties back into the other topic we were just talking about. Yeah. How many of those charges do you have on there? <laughs> it's the weird thing that sets off your credit card fraud thing. <laughs> All of these websites don't matter, but she went to a vegan restaurant one time. Yeah, and yeah, BMO's yeah. calling they're, now. They're, hey, it seems like someone might have stolen your credit card. You're just like, I'm trying to be a better person. This, this is the Brock and Delby podcast. Apparently uh, in Japan, uh, they're launching their own dating app to uh, try and boost the birth rate. Oh, I've heard that their numbers are a bit on the decline these Dude, days. Dude, crazy stat. Last year, Japan recorded twice as many deaths as they did new babies. That's not going in the right direction. So they've launched this app, uh, which basically users will be required to submit documentation proving that they are A, legally single, and mm-hmm. B, sign a letter stating that they are willing to get married on top of oh, that. Oh, wow. They're like, uh, going all out for it. Yeah. Because you'd think if you were really that dead set on, like, we need to boost the population, we need to get our numbers up, you maybe wouldn't be so hung up on things like marriage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Seems like that's an extra hurdle that you're making people climb. I feel like, in general, across the world, if you want people to have more babies, uh, maybe just make life more affordable would be the biggest thing, right? Yeah, I mean, that's just it. I think if you were in the mindset of like, I think maybe we should have a baby, and then you started to do a cost breakdown... You go, maybe we just get a dog. How many people living in this world? I know Courtney and I all the time, you just see like the price of things, just like the economy, the way things are going in the world, the climate, all this stuff. And you're like, I don't know if I want to bring a kid in all this. Well, that's just it. Like if me, you and the kids go out for lunch and the bill comes at the end and you see mine versus yours, you go, maybe I'm good. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I think, yeah, if you make uh, things more affordable, work more flexible, or just have these people go to mandatory dinners with their family once a week where their family (laughs) members have to be like, when are you going to settle down and have a kid? Don't you think it's about time I had a grandson? (laughs) Or they could do what they did with COVID and make people get baby passports. (laughs) You know, like, you can only go out to certain places if you have a kid and you have to prove it. Dude, yeah, you can only go out to the movie theater if you are with child. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) People will be like, all right, listen, I wasn't planning on having kids, but I'm sick of being cooped up in the house. Or, or every radio station just permanently is always playing Marvin Gaye. (laughs) At all times. You see it in some of those old countries during war times where they had like air raid siren speakers in the streets, yeah. but it's just playing this. Yeah. I mean, you hear of like North Korea doing propaganda like this. Or <laughs> you just play sexy music at all times. The problem is, is you're going to see people doing very unsexy everyday things while this plays in the background, <laughs> and it's going to ruin the effectiveness of the song. The Brock and Dolby Brock and Dolby Podcast. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Ed's word of the day. Let's see what he's got. Top of the morning, dude. Yeah, today's word is uh, splendiferous. Yeah, splendiferous. S P L E N D I F E R O U S. Splendiferous. And it means uh, very impressive. That's a pretty bombastic way to say, say very impressive, I think. Hey, that's splendiferous, laddie. Anyways, <laughs> that's about it. Have a great one. Care drop. Splendiferous. When, when is Ed's word of the day going to be bombastic? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was one of his first ones. And now he likes saying it a lot. Yeah. Uh, doesn't splendiferous feel like a Flanders word? Yeah. Like if you told me, it wouldn't feel real. I would just assume it was from some throwaway joke on The Simpsons. So it's supposed to mean like that's impressive? Like, it's just splendid. It's just a way of saying like this is really great. This yeah. is really cool. 
but it like Ed sort of implied it's just like you're adding syllables just to sound cool. Yeah, like the person who uses splendiferous is trying to be impressive. I feel like like when we did the Brock and Dolby show survey, if someone had written in, oh, the show's quite splendiferous, you'd yeah. be like, I hey, get out of here. Imagine if Shania Twain had a wrote the song that don't splendiferous much. <laughs> Oh, so you're a rocket scientist. <laughs> That's not splendiferous. Brad Pitt would have felt ten times worse if it was splendiferous. I'll so. tell you right now, I find Brad Pitt to be quite splendiferous in most of his movies. I think he deserves it. If uh, you're impressed with someone's work at work today, uh, say they did a splendiferous job. But do it in a British accent. Mm. There's no real reason behind it. Quite it just splendiferous, seems yeah, yeah. Oh, it's splendiferous. Quite splendiferous, in it. <laughs> <laughs> splendiferous, splendiferous, <laughs> splendiferous. <laughs> Use it wherever you can today, all right? For more Brock and Dolby, tune in weekday mornings 5.30 to 9. The Brock and Dolby podcast is brought to you by badshop.ca, the Brock and Dolby merch store, with all proceeds going to the Canadian Cancer Society.